definitely been carnage in the crypto space. So let's get to it. And certainly the most recent when it comes to the SEC suits against both Coinbase and Binance. Corey Clipston is CEO at the crypto trading app Swan Bitcoin back with us on Zoom in LA. Corey, um, good to check in with you again. There certainly has been quite the clampdown here in the United States. What do you make of the SEC suits? Yeah. Hi, Carol and Matt. It's great to be back. Um, yeah, it, it is a pretty fascinating time, isn't it? This is kind of the uh, what a lot of folks in the Bitcoin space, meaning uh, Bitcoin, none of the altcoins uh, have been predicting was going to happen for many years, frankly, going back to uh, I think it was February 2018 that Jay Clayton started to make it very clear that his position and the SEC's position even that far back was that uh, you know pretty much everything other than Bitcoin was going to be a security, other than maybe some of these uh, smaller proof of work coins that don't really have much market cap um, would probably be considered commodities as well. Uh, and I think we've seen that pretty consistently broadcast from uh, Gensler's SEC over the last couple of years. And you know you can do all of the legal screening that you want with your own internal lawyers if you're a crypto casino or a crypto exchange but at the end of the day that doesn't make law and so the laws on the books basically say these things are securities and they'll probably have to get laws changed by congress if they want to operate these uh these you know sort of crypto equities in the exactly States. i mean fighting the sec is not usually a winning strategy um, maybe it's better to appeal to the people and try and get things changed at a congressional level. It looks like that's what Coinbase, for example, is doing. Corey, is it um, are are proof of stake um, tokens or proof of stake blockchains more likely to be securities than proof of work blockchains? Yeah, I think that's pretty much inevitable. I think that it's, you know, one of these things where they say, like, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, acts like a duck, it's probably a duck. And that's interest. Right. So I think that's uh, we also have not seen any proof of stake uh, project remotely approach decentralization. You know, the Ethereum roadmap is still completely controlled by Vitalik. Uh, the whole ecosystem is marketed by kind of a uh, an Ethereum industrial complex of consensus, Ethereum Foundation, Coinbase, Circle, Andreessen Horowitz, Paradigm, a few venture funds. Um, so they can say all they want and try to get Ethereum to be the the one centrally controlled crypto that gets a pass. And that's, I think, what their kick save is to try to, to get through. But it doesn't have the benefit of being true. Um, and so we'll see how that plays out. What? For the... I just love it. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't have an opinion officially, so I'm not saying I totally agree. But if I were a I'm person sorry, wait, who had an wait, opinion, first of all, you, you always have an opinion. <laughs> can I? Can I've I, never, I've never found <laughs> proof of stake to be. It, wait, to me, it doesn't okay. fulfill the OG, you know, um, promise of crypto, and it certainly doesn't feel decentralized at all. For those who aren't cool kids in the room, um, just talk a little bit about Corey, if you will, proof of stake versus proof of work, because it's it has to do with valid. Um, um, verification of crypto transactions, but why this yeah, is Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, argument. proof of work means that you're expending energy to secure right. the network, and proof of stake means that you're just trusting humans to kind of coordinate together. And basically, the rich get richer. And if you have more, if you have more Ethereum or more Cardano or more Solana, then uh, you get more. And uh, that's basically that fundamentally leads towards centralization. The second derivative of that is more and more centralization, regardless of where your starting point is. And, uh, and it basically just means that humans are still running it and humans change the monetary policy. As we've seen throughout the history of Ethereum, for instance, the monetary policy is just changeable at a whim, according to the directives of Joe Lubin at Consensus and Vitalik Buterin at the Ethereum Foundation. To tell us about Swan and um, how consumers can use it, can interact with, with your company, yeah. and then who custodies um, the Bitcoin? Yeah, so we are a pretty diversified Bitcoin financial services firm. So at present, we offer brokerage, we offer uh, the Swan IRA, we offer uh, private client services through swanprivate.com. And then we have a whole wealth division that works uh, with financial advisors and RIAs and helps them get Bitcoin into their client portfolios. Uh, later this year, we'll be launching Swan Custody. Uh, we purchased a, a company called Spectre last year, which is one of the top uh, multi-sig custodian 
software is out there. It's free open source software. And that team has been building on top of their protocol to, to build Swan Custody. And then we're also launching asset backed loans, uh, should be in market with asset backed loans this summer. And we think with those services, you basically fulfill essentially all of the needs or most of the needs that anyone who is into Bitcoin and thinking about it for their business or for their portfolio or their family um, would need to sort of check those boxes to have a relationship. Yeah. And I think the key to our success so far has been that we we just have a lot of the top experts in the world on Bitcoin and on financial services at the intersection, like our, our, our senior team and all of our salespeople come from, you know, Goldman, Bridgewater, Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, these different places, but are longtime Bitcoiners as well. And so they, they kind of speak both languages and that so, really helps us translate right. what's going on for people. Corey, you sound um, like it's full speed ahead. What was the impact though of those SEC suits against Coinbase and Binance? What kind of either slow down or just maybe pull back a little bit that you see or even a lot as a result of that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for us, this was like the oceans parting in front of us and saying, oh, my gosh, there's, you know, three years of open field running at least for Bitcoin financial services. And so we immediately greenlit tripling the sales team and I, I greenlit a 15x in ad spend last week. So nice. we're going really, really hard after this. We think this is the moment to tell the truth without a lot of distraction from the uh what I'd say the uh, orange washing affinity marketers on the crypto side of the fence. And so I think this is uh, this is this is salad days for those people that thought Bitcoin was the thing that really, really matters, which, you know, again, happens to be true. And do you expect all of these other businesses to be pushed offshore? I mean, in the case of Coinbase, it looks like um, Brian Armstrong wants to stand and fight, but everyone else seems to be heading for the hills in Europe or Asia? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the payoff is so massive if they're somehow able to get some kind of accommodation or, you know, again, you know, try to fight something through Congress or whatever. Um, don't think they'll succeed with that. Again, just because when, when people that take laws and markets very seriously look at it, they'll kind of spot the hypocrisy of, you know, uh, regulate me specially, but not the other guys, not the penny stock operators, not the multi-level marketers and the Ponzi schemers. They only want sort of new regulations for their little corner of fraud and chicanery. Um, and I don't think they'll get away with it. Yeah. Um, I'm not pro-regulation, but I am anti-scam and I'm definitely anti-hypocrisy. So again, if you, if you want to open up the floodgates and let all these things through, then I think you have to look at basically every corner of the market and, you know, you'll probably have to see a dramatic reduction in the scope of regulation across the board because there's so many people across TradFi that would like a light touch in their little area. That's their pet project, too. Right.